Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and uh, this month I'm going over some of my favorite ensembles from the Reactor User Library. Uh, today I'm going to focus on Drum Machine Uski by Tom Buettner, um, which is a pretty nifty little drum machine that has a built-in sequencer. And it also accepts incoming MIDI data. And if you want to use external MIDI, uh, the notes to play back the drums start on note 36. And just make sure you have Omni selected in the uh, channel parameter. All right, so each drum sound we have is made up of four drum engines being mixed together. So we have the drum engine here. Uh, the cymbal engine, the FM engine, and the noise engine. And in order to determine how much each of these engines is used, there's a volume mixer at the bottom here. So the sound that we have is a drum and FM mixed together. Of course, by adding some cymbal, you'll change the sound. And adding the noise didn't seem to do anything. That's because both of the oscillators in the noise engine are off. So at the top of each of these engines, we have um, a number of oscillators that we can turn on and off just by pressing on their buttons. And you can hear how the sound changes. Some of the controls in this ensemble aren't necessarily what you're going to be used to from a normal reactor interface. So for example, we can draw in our envelopes here. And one cool thing is that drum sounds usually don't have an attack time, but we can add some attack to our sounds to get kind of a bunch of different FX sort of sounds. And another cool thing we can do is use the velocity control at the bottom here and turn the velocities all the way up. And then over in the right hand column here, we have an overall velocity control. If we turn that all the way down, we can get our drums into this kind of overdrive sound that's really great and distorted. So while these engines are designed to create um, pretty realistic drums, it's also very easy to um, use the parameters creatively to get some pretty glitchy, distorted sounds. So we have an access uh, to a total of 12 of these setups. And you can choose which one is currently active by clicking on the appropriate number in the mixer area at the top here. And because there's an awful lot of controls in each one, we have access to a cool little copy paste function at the bottom here. So you can copy one drum sound and open up another drum and paste in that sound. All right, so let's get rid of that sound and reload up our kit again here. And one last thing I wanted to show you was in the drum synth, we have access to this little preset button in the upper left hand corner here that allows us to load up some very common um, frequency values for our oscillators. choose how full to make those sounds um, by turning on and off the individual oscillators in the drum module. Okay, so the other half of the synth mode is our individual drum FX section um, over on the right hand view over here. So we have access to um, a reverb, a delay, um, a, some filters, and the velocity control that I showed you earlier. Um, and so these will affect only in each individual drum. 
All right, so next let's look at the sequencer. We have two views available to us in the sequencer section. We have track mode and stack mode. So stack mode, um, which what we're looking at right now, is just going to show us all 12 of our sequences at once. And we can flip over to track mode by clicking on this button in the upper right hand corner here. And now we can look at individual uh, drum tracks for each drum. One thing you want to make sure of when you're programming in your patterns is to make sure you're in pattern mode. So usually um, the presets are going to be in song mode. So if you press play, you're going to notice that um, you're not going to have a whole lot of time to, working, to work on a single pattern before it switches to the next one. So you can turn pattern mode on um, at the bottom of your screen. And where it says song, just click and then it'll say pattern. Another thing I like to turn on is sync mode. So you can just click on the button right next to the pattern button in the lower right hand corner that says sync. And um, from now on, the clock will sync to the main reactor clock or your DAW clock, which is just a lot more useful in my opinion than having to um, start the sequence from the interface. And like with the drums, we have access to a copy-paste mode. So um, if we want to have a pattern we want to copy, just press copy at the bottom, choose your new pattern, and paste it in. Um, and this is pretty useful for obvious reasons. But what's really cool is we also have access to a partial copy paste. So you can select a small area of your screen using the right click button um, and only copy paste that one small part of a sequence. This is a pretty cool um, feature that most reactor ensembles do not go to the trouble of uh, implementing. So it's pretty nifty um, and definitely saves you a lot of time when you're programming. And our sequencing section also has an area for modulating our different parameters. So we can switch between note view and mod view using these buttons right here. And once in mod view, we have a uh, selection of six different parameters that we can affect via sequencing. So just by way of example, um, if we choose the pitch uh, value from our menu here, uh, we can affect the pitch of our bass drum. And the next thing I'd like to cover is the randomization functions. This is one of my favorite parts of this ensemble because it allows you to create these generative rhythms that are very glitchy and strange. So we have the dynamic and the generative randomization uh, buttons and they work in tandem with this group of knobs here. These are going to control the parameters of our randomization. So we have um, one of these knobs for each of our 12 tracks. So if we just select the first track, uh, we can draw in uh, several of the knobs and then click the Generate button to give us a completely random track for that particular drum. <laughs> And which drums are going to be affected depends on which ones you have selected in the left hand column here. So we can turn them all on at once with the top button. And then whenever we make any changes to these knobs, it's going to affect the knobs for each drum. Uh, when I was first screwing around, I only had the first track selected, but now that they're all selected, whenever we move any of these knobs, it's going to affect all the drums at once. So now when we click Generate, we're going to generate for all 12 tracks at once. 
and that can be a bit much. Um, you might want to turn down the density knobs to get less action going on. <laughs> So the density knobs are the uh, ones with the colored knobs at the bottom here. And if you turn the dynamic function on, it's just going to continuously um, randomize the sequence as it's playing so you can just get these completely generative sequences going on which is pretty fun as well all right so as you can probably tell there's just a ton going on in this ensemble i don't even have time to begin covering the song or fx sections although they should be pretty easy to figure out fortunately uh, this ensemble comes with a 24-page manual that does a pretty good job of explaining everything, so you should be able to use that to figure out the rest of the controls. Uh, once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. Hope you guys like this tutorial. If you do, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website. And I'll be back again next week with a new Reactor tutorial.